What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. Glad to be here co-hosting the pop with you today, Ben. The <laughs> Okay, I, I, I'm honestly, I'm buying in. Mom told me the other day that she was listening to the episode where we called you the other uncle. Oh. And she thought it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> oh, so, great, great. Now mom's on your side. Now, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Had to fight hard for that one. Mm-hmm. But, but you can be co-uncles with Tyler. Okay. You know, I, think, I think that's a fine way to put it. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Very, <laughs> very, very exciting stuff. Okay, so diving into today's episode, I feel like I've been, I've been tucking the corny joke right in at the end. Do you think I can squeeze it in at the beginning? Ben, I would like to say I believe you can, but history isn't on your side at this point. It's true. Even well, though you're bringing it up right now, it even though it feels like you're seconds away from saying it, right. it, who knows? There, there is no inevitability in this world, people. <laughs> there is, the harsh realities of things. The, the harsh reality. Ben is very close to saying the corny joke. Will he get there? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we're going to. I feel okay, like we're going to. Here, here we go. All right, all right. So I actually have two today. Yeah. Two, because I thought I thought the first one was just like, you know, short, sweet zinger. Yeah. And then the other one I thought was was just super fun. Okay. So the first one's going to come from Jacob Fisher, who says, how many apples grow on a tree? Is this like a riddle? Like all of them? It's exactly that. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at you go. Oh, wow. I love it when you get it right. Uh, it's very, yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. Is, all of the apples grow on the tree. All of the apples yeah. grow on the yeah. tree, yeah. right? This Go- is, this is like, what, what side of a chicken do the feathers grow on? Both? The outside. Uh, uh see, you're like the, the left side. This bit. I see what you, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, if, a, if a rooster lays an egg on top of a house, which way will it roll down? Rooster something like Exactly. Yay. <laughs> oh, look at me go. Oh, man. We're flying. We're flying. We're flying. Okay. So uh, maybe we're getting multiple because, I mean, like, Jay dropped a corny, corny riddle. This corny week. riddles? Hey, Whoa. how about you? Okay. Uh, the next one comes from Vanessa Izquierdo, who says, why did Barty Crouch Jr. stop drinking? Why did Barty Crouch Jr. stop drinking? Uh, probably because Dumbledore barged in and was like, yo. <laughs> What up, dude? <laughs> that did that did play a, a small role yeah. in it, uh, but it was it was because it was making him moody. Oh, pretty good because <laughs> huh? it turns him into moody. Turns him into, I, yeah. thought, I, I read that That's one. It was like, too good, too good. That's very um, good. As always, if you guys have corny joke Solid. submissions and want to send them to me at popcorn popcorn culture pod at gmail dot com, I do super appreciate it. Yes, we always love a good a good corny joke here. Now, Ben, I'm looking at our show notes here. Yes. And it says, Ben sold his dream car. I did. Tell me, tell me what happened. So what <sighs> what was your dream car? Okay, so my so when I my very first car when when I was uh 16 was a, a hand-me-down from dad, uh, which when when I first discovered I was getting a hand-me-down car, I think that I I massively underappreciated the car that I was being given. Uh, but it was in a Zuzu Trooper 2, mm-hmm. a 1996. It was green. I called her Sue. Nice. And uh, it was it was amazing. We've, we've talked about all the exploits we've been on where I, you know, I took it basically to the moon and back. I mean, it was full stock. You I know? mean, like, we, we did dumb things in the Trooper in Sue. Yeah. Oftentimes, the dumber things were things we did not inside of Sue, but outside of Sue. Which which was the process of... of actually like riding the yeah vehicle. like like riding the vehicle from the outside whether whether that be on the roof whether it be uh you know just standing on the little step the on the that because it had like a little step to help you get up because it was a bit of a bit of a hike up to the, the seats yeah, yeah 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 although at one point in time so this is this is like the state i was in because here's the thing you know like you you see somebody drive past you on the street and like like a crazy lifted truck or jeep or something it's got all the things yeah it's like as much as you might despise that person or be like this guy it, there are only two reactions to that person like either you really appreciate the stuff the um additions they've made to their off-road vehicle and you as a fellow off-roader can be like wow that's that, some like, serious you got some cool gnar stuff you got there yes friend. or i think probably the more common reaction is like whoa oh my god this guy i this guy is a particular kind of driver that now i'm sitting next to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so there, there's plenty of that but here's the thing about those particular people is that like when you were seeing it it is a very like showy hobby in particular mm-hmm. it's it's typically very loud it's like it's very eye-catching in a way that is either positive or negative again based on the reasons you just described but the thing that you might need to keep in mind is that for this person that is like their 
collection. Right. Like, you know, so if you have like a collection of like rare comic books or action figures or even not rare anything, but like you're particularly into one thing and you've collected a whole bunch of stuff revolving that one thing, like that person's one thing is their vehicle. That is a very good way, I think, to think about it because you're right, like, if you if you're the someone who just has yeah, like a like an action figure collection or something that you can house within your home, then it's not that that might not elicit similar reactions from people who don't get it. They'd be like, "Wow, you spent a lot of money on Pokemon cards." Okay, you're like 33 years old. <laughs> <laughs> or they might be like, "Dude, amazing collection you have here." Right, right. The the more you are able to understand somebody else's hobby the more you are able to appreciate it. But I would say one thing about myself in particular is that I don't have like one like locked in hobby for myself. I just appreciate hobbies. You just appreciate that people appreciate things. A- absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is like the thing where it's like I can see anything like it doesn't matter and this this is like what makes me excited about being like a parent is that like there is no one thing that like my children could pick that that I couldn't be into. That is that is very true. It's like it does not matter what like Luke or Nick or Nate come to me with. It is like you have my full support. It's like, I'm in. I'm in. What do we need to <laughs> I'm do? In, I'm in. Other people could bring me the same thing, and I'd, I would I would laugh it off. But you, I mm. <laughs> right, right, right. I will be behind you no matter what. I got you. I got, got you. you. Uh, but so that being said, going back to going back to Sue. Uh, like you said, we we had like the runner boards on the side, which were like yeah. steps that you could like, you know, get into the vehicle with. Mm-hmm. And, and when dad bought it, that was like an like an add on uh, like, you know, um, package of, of some sort like, right. you know, that that made it better. Like right. you, you probably paid more for it. But as I was uh, progressing, though, I couldn't afford anything to do with this trooper. Like I couldn't I couldn't lift it. I, what you might not understand about those big burly tires is they cost like three hundred dollars a piece, Whew. and you need five of them, right? Because you have the spare. Yeah. So it's like when you see these things, it's like appreciate people's tires because tires be expensive. They be expensive. Um. Well, or don't appreciate it depending on who you are. Um. But so like for me, a an air quotes upgrade that I could make to the trooper was taking those running boards off like that, really? was, that, that was, was taking it off. how is that an upgrade well because it increases your your clearance oh, so I because see. they might be the things that would hit you know like a rock or a root or something that was sticking mm. out so if you could make the bottom of the vehicle you know three inches higher by not having those there then you've you've gained something in your a bit like your performance factor you've taken off something you could damage exactly yeah so my, my huge limitation as a 16 year old kid was i had absolutely no resources like at my disposal to to go and add things to this vehicle so the best thing I could possibly do was just remove things from it in order to make it better. Uh, and the, all the while, I would always look around because I had this trooper, which honestly was amazing. Like, it never failed me. It always got out of everything. Like, I was mm-hmm. always blown away with my completely stock vehicle. Uh, but I always, always, always wanted the Jeep Wrangler because the Jeep Wrangler is, like, built for this stuff like they build it knowing that you are going to take the stock wheels off of it and put bigger wheels on it right like they give you attach points for like additional lights on like the the grill or the windshield or you know the front bumper the back bumper like everything is made so that it is very 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 easy to work on and as a result there's just tons and tons and tons of aftermarket parts which makes them more affordable right and you know as a result the 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 entire cycle works within itself really nicely so that these you know jeep owners can go and do like really fun jeep stuff and so there's there's definitely something to the jeep wrangler in particular like it is it has a specific vibe to it that i think everyone understands yes like no one's just like going out looking for a new daily driver and like settles on like you know what i just looked at all the all the data this made the most sense so i got the i got the wrangler right like everyone who owns a wrangler is in on the vibe exactly and and that's the thing so like one thing you might not know or maybe you do know about people who own jeep wranglers is there's such a thing as the jeep wave so anybody who drives a wrangler if you pass another wrangler on the road you kind of do this like two finger like like you know like yo mm. like so if you ever see like a handprint on the on like the backhand side of someone's uh like rear view mirror that's them being like in case i didn't see you here's a handprint wave there's the wave that, that i can offer you uh and, and it's kind of like a fun little club you're in and people are really good about it like yeah i would say if i were driving across town and past you know 15 jeeps there's a lot of people who drive wranglers in our area um i would bet 13 of them 
you, right. like will have waved at you. I, I know that the, the Jeep Wrangler has the wave. Mini Coopers have the wave. Everyone, Do they? I think so, because dad had a Mini Cooper for a while. And that's like that's like its own club. You kind of like for yeah, sure. Yeah. But let me tell you what. You know what does not have a wave is a uh, is a Nissan Juke. Oh. Yeah. I used because that was my the first car I purchased myself. Yes. Yes. And yes. like I was familiar with this concept of like oh yeah gives if you see someone who has like the same car or whatever you just, yeah it's you like, get a little wave like we're in on the club and it was such a unique looking car at the time. Uh, and it was marketed specifically like the marketing at the time was like very much at like young professionals yeah and, and that's the thing it was like yeah. a very cool capable vehicle that was also like a relatively low barrier to entry cost wise right. and th- there was like a certain amount of like zippiness associated with it so there was something sporty to it and i always really loved my particular uh my juke yeah, yeah. as it were but what i quickly found out was that and i would see other people and I'd be like oh yeah and i would get, i would always go for the wave and i would just never get it in return because what i found out was that despite it being marketed at like young professionals and that being like one big group of people who owned them the other group was like um housewives or like like i would say like mm, people moms whose kids have already gone to college <laughs> yeah, for whatever yeah. reason that is like the other group was like somewhat um older women okay okay interesting yeah interesting. and i picked i don't pro- probably you've never noticed because you don't look at people driving jukes but you, of course you notice other people who have the same car as you and i could not believe how often be like man these are not the same people as me oh it's yeah. it's so funny though but because i i would say mine was was almost the exact opposite which yeah. is that like uh one of the like aquarium people in general mm-hmm. are like a huge slathering of people like it, you you could not predict one person to the next they couldn't be more wildly different other than the fact that they both liked aquariums and jeep wranglers oh interesting so back when we had our retail store it was i would tell you it is not uncommon for a jeep wrangler to have parked in our parking lot every single day mm-hmm. if not for there to be like occasions like a saturday or sunday where there were like three of them lined up Ooh, it is interesting this it that is a very interesting like venn diagram but not maybe that surprising i i like i can see why it would happen because as you like as we've discussed the jeep in it's like it's a it's a hobby unto itself it is and it is. it's like a high investment hobby as is aquarium so you can see why the kind of people who are into aquariums would also be attracted to jeep ownership yes yeah 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 and i think there's also like a like a little bit like people who are into like nature and the outdoors also tend to like aquariums because it's like bringing a small piece Mm -hmm. of the outdoors into your you know your direct environment right so i think that there's also a little bit of that that parallel there where it's yeah the outdoorsman in you um so anyway that was me for for forever so i always wanted the jeep wrangler but they had this like great reputation uh as i was going through my um you know teenage years or whatever and most specifically because they're frequently used off-roading but they kind of have like the reputation for the potential to like flip but i think it's typically because it's not like on roads it's like right. on <laughs> like rock crawling or right. you know whatever the case may be it's like yes more jeeps flip not on roads um <laughs> but uh that being the case, I think it was something that it was kind of like mom and dad couldn't couldn't quite buy into it. And they also probably saw what I was doing. Oh, um, yeah. There was no way they were going to, like, get you, like, more tools to go be dangerous. Exactly. Exactly. Which is probably wise on their part. Mm, yeah. Indeed. Um, but like I said before, so, like, the only things I could do to my trooper was to take things away from it because I really didn't have the resources to add to it. So now here as an adult, like, I finally reached the point in time where it was like, you know what? I can go and like, it's my choice now. Like I can go and buy a Jeep Wrangler and, yeah. I, and I'll have it. And I was so excited. Like I went and I got it and it was, you know, like bright red and mm-hmm. it was amazingly cool. And I was so excited about it. Um, but the, the like thing that I kept running into all of a sudden was th- the exact thing that I knew as a kid, which is that like making these things beefed up is so expensive. Right. It's like, and so I, every, like I had, jeep catalogs delivered to my house i had like you know a bookmarked page of all of like the parts that i wanted to buy the lift kit the wheels the rims like you know all of the different stuff and i had you know my instagram if you were like going to my discovery you would see all sorts of aftermarket lifted jeeps and stuff like that like it's it's what i was consuming but i could not for the life of me pull the trigger on these things oh what what was holding you back it's again it's it's like even having 
you know, potential resource to purchase them. It is like my brain cannot justify it. Right. Like, it's like, I love it. And like, I want to go and be a part of that. But it's also like I bought when I bought it, it was a, you know, like a brand new Wrangler. Mm -hmm. And there's the other part of my brain. that's like, this is like the nicest car you've ever owned. You can't like put a huge lift kit on it and go drive it through the woods right. like you can't do that like if you had seen if you had seen the sides of my trooper it no longer had clear coat on it it was just streaks right. from all of the branches that had been dragged across it right like, you know i don't even think i don't think you could buff it to the point where it would just look like a normal green car again mm -hmm. it was yeah so i just couldn't do that and it is it was like okay well so you know, but like was there was there no value in just the aesthetics of the upgrades they call that mall cross crawlers Mall and crawlers yeah because okay. those like that's the idea is that like you you upgrade them but they're so nice at that point that like the only place you take them is like to the mall like in, uh, in like see. parking lots and stuff like that mm. which is fine i actually have absolutely no issue with that whatsoever and right. that is exactly who i would have been because there's no way that i would have taken this ridiculously like nice vehicle to me you know off-road right um, but then if you're not going to go off road, then are the upgrades. I see. Yeah, I can see the circle. And, and yeah. yeah, exactly. Like and they will look cooler. They will look cooler. <laughs> but here's the other thing, too, is that like my brain in some instances is utilitarian enough that like I know and appreciate that other Jeep owners who will appreciate the upgrades that I made will appreciate them if they are performance capable. Mm -hmm. And do you see where I'm going with this? So it's like, I don't want to take it off road, but the only parts that I would be willing to buy are the ones that would perform off road because the only other people who are going to appreciate it are the people who take theirs off road, mm -hmm. but I'm not taking mine off road. I see the problem. Yes. So like there are air quotes, aesthetic lift kits where you could like make it taller. And it's like, if you were to take it off roading, there'd be a very realistic chance that if you if you hit a rock too hard or something, it would cause the shackle to like crumple and it would it would it's not made to actually go do anything other than make your vehicle taller. Gotcha. And those are very inexpensive. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, on the on the flip side, the real ones cost an enormous amount of money. And you're like, you, yeah, yeah, you have but to they like, look the same. But well, to the to the to the lay the lay viewer and you're only but so, it's so interesting because like it sounds like the only people you're actually trying to impress are other jeep drivers are other jeep drivers which i imagine for a lot of jeep drivers maybe is also the goal mm -hmm. it's like but it's not like you're trying to you know like like outdo others it's almost just like you're you're that much more part of the the club right you know by by way of doing it so anyway long long story long uh the <laughs> i i got to the point with this thing where it was like I also own a truck that I that I that I have that is nice and fine. And Alice has her car, which is nice and fine. So, you know, we have like the baby on the way. We have three vehicles and only two drivers in the household. And mm -hmm. it's like, OK, we're we're probably at the point where it's like this could do more for us being sold than it can do for us in our driveway. Right. And the truck that I have, I can use for a variety of other purposes. Like it's a very. Yeah, it's a very yeah, functional vehicle. It's a very functional vehicle. In, in in the scheme of things, if we're going on a road trip or taking the baby anywhere, we're going to be taking Alice's car. So really the outlier at some point in time started to be the Jeep. And right. So it was like... <sighs> so even though it's the car you've wanted your whole life and you have it now, <laughs> like it ended up being the one that was just the least... It's Is it is it like ironic that it's like you wanted it because of all these like crazy things you did in your youth that once you had it as an adult, you were like, were too wise to do again. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think that's a huge part of it. Like I, you know, people talk about like the midlife crisis or whatever. And I, I've wondered about this before. We've probably even talked about it before, but it's this thought that like, like what I've always sort of imagined is happening. Cause it usually happens like in your, your mid forties or so. And you go out and I, it seems like many people buy a, like a sports car mm -hmm. uh, or just very specifically a car could even be a Jeep Wrangler. Yeah. Um, but my guess is that like what happens is you you are of the age that you really want something and then you start to have like responsibilities and your first job and getting married and starting a family and doing all those types of things. And it's such a long period of time before you start daydreaming about that type of thing again that when you do, you just land exactly where you left off. Right. You just like put that book on the shelf and now it's like, oh, yeah, I where, where was I at it with daydreaming? You pick it up and you're like, 
Right. Jeep Wrangler. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's a yeah. great way to put it. It's yeah. like, that's the page you left it on. You put a bookmark in there, you put it on the shelf and you come back and you're like, oh yeah, I remember this. This is what I want. I have it in this book. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, yeah, I think that that's ultimately what happened to me. And so anyway, my, my whole thing in my head though, is like, it, it was a very, um, very practical decision for our household on the whole, like, mm-hmm. Uh, like we're, I, we've talked about it before, but I'm like renovating the house and doing a whole bunch of stuff to it. So it's like, okay, I have a depreciating asset that I'm not using that's sitting in my driveway and I can sell that and put it into an appreciating asset, which is my, my home, which is like me thinking very like, what a responsible decision you've made. Whatever. Except, except accepting. Cause I have, I have another note here in our show notes. Okay. Because I was talking to Alice about it and she's like, she's like, are you okay with doing this? Like, I know this is your dream car because like, it's not, it's not like hurting you to continue owning it either. Not at all. Not right. at all. This is just something that, that we could, that my family could benefit from, th- from doing. Right. So otherwise, it, yeah, otherwise it's fine. It's not hurting me in any way, shape or form. Um, but so I, I was like talking to her and I was like, okay, well like maybe if I do it, I can, I can like take some of the money that we got from selling it and just do something fun for my truck. And that would be like a fun way to be like, okay, like the legacy of the Jeep is that I, that I got to do something to my truck. And Mm -hmm. so promptly she's like, okay, well, like, what would you want to do? Like, would you want to put like a, a, I can't lift the (laughs) the the very very first thing she asked is like, well, do you want to like lift it? And I was like, no, (laughs) uh, (laughs) if I could, if I was going to lift something, I wouldn't have sold the Jeep. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm not doing that. And she's like, oh, well, how about like, like one of those, like, like, um, caps that you can put on the back so that like you can have the truck bed itself protected from, you know, the elements. Mm. And I was like, okay, that's practical. That's practical. But how about this? Am, am I too old for subwoofers? Oh, are you too old for subwoofers? Am, so, okay. Oh goodness. <laughs> oh boy. I remember. So you, uh, it's interesting you bring up subwoofers because earlier you were saying there was nothing you could add to the trooper, but there was, one the, there was, I was like, I'm pretty sure I remember you adding some big old beefy subwoofers there in the back. I, I did. I was that guy. I was the guy who you'd pull up next to at the at the the traffic light and like their license plate is like right like like you just going crazy. Uh and I I have to tell you and we we again we've discussed it before. I don't know hardly anything there is to know about music at all. I can't play an instrument. I don't even know the lyrics to probably more than 3 songs mm-hmm. like start to finish. Right. But one thing I have always liked my entire life is speakers right like i like the sound that they make and i remember i had a good buddy in in high school who got subwoofers for his jeep at the time and he was like yeah like you got to come over and i I didn't even know what a subwoofer was and i was like what what is this thing and i remember getting the car and he like just he just cranked up a song and like the whole thing just like launched and i was like i have to have this i have to have this right like this is so cool and i have to tell you this was not something in any way, shape, or form that I was purchasing for external validation. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't something where I thought that it was cool that, like, my car sounded loud from afar. This was purely something that I liked the way it sounded inside of the car. Mm. See, it's so interesting that that's why you purchased it, because the way in which you enjoy it forces it on everyone. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so that's, that's sort of the thing, is that, like, again, if this is... Like it feels <clears throat> ridiculously obnoxious and I've actually even looked it up and where the subwoofer can even go in my truck is under the same seat that the car seat would go on. Oh, and so like I'm, I'm like driving to work this morning and I'm like, you know, I'm kind of like looking back and like the little like side view mirror or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that, that's where it would go. And it's like, mm-hmm. but I can't have the baby sitting on top of the, the subwoofer. The subwoofer. I don't think so. Um, let me just say on this front that just yesterday on my drive home i pulled up next to someone at the stoplight who in, who indeed had some some woofs okay as okay. it were as it were <laughs> and i was just like i i will admit that i was just like Ugh, this <sighs> this is so loud yes i have no appreciation for I, this yeah, I was gentleman. like this is this is obnoxious i was like i was like trying to like side eye on the guy like you serious right now right I'm trying right. to listen to a book <laughs> I got a theory I'm working a, on. Um, I'm listening to name of the wind people. Right. Or right. the wise man's fear. But, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, so I would say that would you get, let me let me run this by you. Okay. That it sounds like your truck is not like you could put subwoofers in there and 
but it will be in the way of where the baby needs to go. So that's a problem. Well, it's it's not technically in in the way. So okay. so JL, you know, they make mm. a they make a stealth box. Oh, they make a stealth box that goes underneath the seat. Yeah, you know you know how stealthy subwoofers are. Of course, no, <laughs> nobody ever notices. <laughs> no them. one notices them. At like, all. What, what is that? <laughs> what is all that? I can't even see where the box I can't even is. See it. <laughs> is it stealthily hidden somewhere? <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you for asking. Let me ask. Could you just get? subwoofers for not your car but like just for your home yeah well because <laughs> you can have you like speakers you could just have nice speakers in your house it's true yeah it's true it's possible but it's different <laughs> like i don't know what it is about being in your car but like there is like a strange kind of like therapeutic something that comes like when you pull up at your house and you just like sit in your car for a second and you're like well alice alice was reading a book about like i don't know something and uh i think it was like psychology and marriage and something or another uh and one of the things that they talk about is like this transition time Mm -hmm. so it's like if oh yes if if you are to you know come home from work and you walk in the door and there's like 10 chaotic things happening all at once it's like you haven't quite had enough time to shift your brain from like work brain to now i'm home try to tackle this stuff brain And and the idea is is that if you can allow 10, 15 minutes for that transition to happen, then you are 10 times more equipped to walk in and handle the chaos. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a very small amount of time can make all of the difference in the world when it comes to actually like being effective at what you're doing. And I I think this is just true about me. And I feel like I've always sort of had like a a sense of like calm in my vehicles anyway. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's, that's probably why it's almost like, it's kind of like my car is like my childhood bedroom in a way. It's like, oh. this is my space. This is like, your space. Yeah. Do yeah. you not have like a room in your house that is just like your space? No. No? Not don't, really. You don't have like a like an office space? I do sort of have an office space. But I'm it's... just thinking about your house and I can think of like three rooms that I think aren't used at all. Almost everything is used for something. Well, well, but like your attic is like a workout space, right? Like it that could be like an alone space or don't you have like a, a, like when we work from home, you had a office space. I do have an office space, but that is about to become the nursery. Okay. And then what about the room that leads to the attic? That's Alice's closet. Oh, that's Alice's closet. Yeah. I see. And then the other one's a guest bedroom. Okay. So I see. I know. I I know. I know. So anyway, it's something to consider. Okay. But that, that was, that was sort of like my, uh, same thing kind of picking up on my, my daydream notebook Mm -hmm. being like, okay, okay. So like, this is, this is like an opportunity where I can take the Jeep's legacy. I can apply it to something, but what would that something be? Because again, I have all the same problems that I have. Does it have to be truck related? It doesn't have to be. Okay. (laughs) But it feels like, it feels like it's in that category. (laughs) It's in like this, that's like the spiritual success, successor way or something. Right. Could you just get like way better speakers? Conceivably. Like, would that still give you the same, like. You're thinking, you've already taken it too practically. I've already taken it too practically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that. (laughs) It's okay. What about just a giant brush guard? (laughs) Just okay. way too big. Way too, okay. The thing about brush guards <laughs> that people don't know, this is this is one thing where if you're in the know, maybe you can know. There are there are two types of brush guards, but many of them are purely aesthetic. Like mm. they will actually cause significantly more damage to your vehicle if you run into something with a brush guard. Like all you have really done is taken the pressure points of your front grill and and made them like that much more mm. focused. Here's what okay, I think I've got it, Ben. Are you ready? Okay. Wench. A a winch. A winch. Like to like to like reel myself yeah, in. To like reel other stuff in. Okay, I actually don't hate that. That's that's fun, man. It is one no of my- one no one does this upgrade. And then when you need it, you're like, hold on, let me just go. Let me give it the old Let me grab the winch. Let me grab the winch. <clears throat> I will tell you that there have been times during snowstorms where I have specifically gone out in my truck to pull people out of like mm-hmm. like ditches and stuff. Yeah. And that is actually something I take I take a certain amount of like uh, I don't know, pr- pride, enjoyment. Um, it, it makes me happy to help people. Right. And I also get to hear, this is another thing about owning like equipment and my, I would say most of my, like all of my power tools, my vehicles, my bike, almost all of them have more technology than I have skill. 
So like mm-hmm. almost at all times I am leaving potential on the table because I am not a good enough woodworker to run my table saw as well as it can be run. And I don't haul enough with my truck to have all of its towing capacity fully maxed out. I like, don't know. You tr- you'd haul a camper. That's true. I mean, if that's if that doesn't qualify as utilizing the hauling capacity of your truck. I mean, unless you're trying to do like cross country, like mini tractor trailer hauling or something. Is that not a hobby? That's not, I don't think that's a hobby. <laughs> Is I this think not an point, ambition of yours? I think then you're just a truck driver. Oh, you okay. know, which if you want to be, you know, go for it. It's okay. Fine. Okay. Then you can get some subwoofers. You're already annoying everyone on the road anyway. <laughs> I'm glad to know that I have your full support for my big rig ambitions. There you go. Um, okay, so let's let's transition out of this because I actually think I have a great way to do it. Okay, okay. so we go. Uh, you you had recommended at one point in time that I start to um, maybe do a little additional reading on some some forms of philosophy. It, yes, and or or psychology. I believe I remember suggesting that here on the pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I have done a little bit of that because one topic that I have wanted to talk about on the Super Carlin Brothers main show for a little while is it was sparked finally because there was, you know, like the third instance that I was aware of in the same genre series where all villains have quite literally the exact same like mantra, Mm -hmm. which is for the greater good. Right. It's Um, it's such a weird thing because it sounds like, yeah, for the greater good, that sounds like a a good thing. Yeah, it's it's right. very, I, and I think the reason that it's so frequently used is because it's like it's a very compelling like rationale for a villain to have because it's sometimes at the at bare minimum you might be able to like understand the logic even if you wouldn't back the methods. So it's, yeah, it's a very convenient way. It's a convenient mindset for a lot of villains. I think in popular like um, fiction because it you need a reasonable reason for the villain to be doing their thing like evil for just the absolute sake of evil is so boring but if they have like a if they really if they have like a conviction and it's like yes it's a lot of bad things but the ends justify the means it's for the greater good like i yes bad have to do bad but it's uh, that's okay in my opinion because the net gain is so vast. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So like Thanos is, is probably like, you know, the, the giant glowing example of this particular Mm -hmm. thing. So like Thanos is not out there trying to, you know, do whatever so that he can sit on some great big shiny throne at some point in time and, you know, rule the galaxy. Like he's not, he's not like the emperor from star Wars in, in that same regard. Um, so it's like, what his quest to do is basically like, I saw what happened on my planet. There weren't enough resources to go around. I had extreme measures that we could have taken that could have allowed my place to exist. And we didn't do them. And as a result, Titan collapsed. And now I see the same thing happening galaxy wide. Very either or like either it's my way or the planet will collapse. Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, he is a super villain. <clears throat> like, right. There is that. There's that. You know? It's like, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, well, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that Thanos was a rational thinking man. I'm just telling you where he's coming from. <laughs> he um, thinks he's rational. <laughs> yes. And there is that. Uh, but so, you know, his big argument is like, okay, there's not enough resources in the galaxy. This is going to cause a huge problem. What we can do is just cut the entire population in half. And then all of a sudden there will be enough resources. Doesn't that work out really nicely Mm. for everybody? And, uh, it seems like there's been a whole bunch of models that have suggested that that is just simply not the case. And it would have just been a problem again in the future. Right. Like this, (laughs) this is more of a band aid solution than it is like, uh, right. You know, like an, like an actual forever solution. But the same thing is true with, um, Grindelwald and, you know, the going back to like his era of, uh, rain or whatever in the wizarding world is that, you know, he is basically like every, like the wizard's man, you know, like we're, we're being suppressed. We're hiding from the muggles, but like, look at us. We're so powerful. Look at all the great things we can do. Like, why are we living beneath them when we could be Right, like we shouldn't be living in secret. We're the ones with all of the power, and when they find out about us, they're just going to kill us all because they have big weapons. But if we claim power, then we can improve everything for everyone. Yes. Is so, his messaging. Yes, and, and the reason that it's probably compelling to the people who ultimately follow him is that it's like, this is someone who is fighting for, you know, wizard rights, like, and I fall into that category. Because and I am a wizard. <laughs> right, right, right. But it, it completely disregards the fact that you are then overtaking just another group entirely like it's right. not enti- it's not altruistic it's just i'm putting like we are going to be on top and that's it's it it's a we are superior yes exactly yeah. um 
And then in more recently, you know, in, in this is what finally I was like, okay, what is the, what is the, what, but in name of the wind, what, who I believe to be the, the true villains of the story also have the exact same mantra, quite literally the words for the greater good. I'm I mean, like, the fact that that's the mantra is like almost like it's starting to be like a, a, a red flag. Yeah. Like, Oh, for the greater good, you're the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, now I know yeah. who it is. It's the same thing in a, in a watchman with like a, I think it's Ozymandias. He's like, yes. yeah. Guess what? I'm going to cause a giant natural disaster, and uh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be how everyone comes. It's going to kill people, but everyone will come together afterwards. And they're like, "Wow, you shouldn't have told us that." And he's like, "Guys, I already did it. Okay, I'm not like these idiots in other comic books. I'm not right, right. telling you until it's done." <laughs> right. And they're like, "What?" Anyway. <laughs> yeah. No. It's a, it's, a, I mean, it's a very good point. It's a very good point. So anyway, so I I was I was wanting to dig into this. I was wanting to try to understand like what like what is it about this line of thinking that so many various writers have all sort of like come to the same conclusion that's like this is this is like the the thing this Mm -hmm. is like what what we need to grab to and basically i found that it actually fits into like uh, a couple of different styles of philosophy if i can Mm -hmm. get my notes to find it here um so basically it's it falls into the category of consequentialism 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 okay. yeah and so the way that this works i mean this is this is exactly thanos's thinking basically to the letter it's that like you are you are making the decision that pr- provides the best consequences and like that is the way that you would that you would approach the particular problem right consequences meaning that like actions have not necessarily negative consequences just that like actions have resulting actions yes yes and the the very famous example of this uh is like the trolley problem so you would Mm -hmm. have like a trolley where you can you can pull the little railroad switcheroo thing and if it goes one way there's one person in the path and if it goes the other way there's three people in the path and consequentialism would say save the three people i think normally in this situation you know the one person Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So it's one person you know versus three people you don't. Right. Okay. Well, either way, I think in, in some capacity, the the speaking out in these terms, the argument is that this is three versus one. Mm-hmm. And the 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 greater end result is that. And I mean it's a very complicated philosophical problem for sure. To to discuss. And I mean you, people could probably go round and round and round and round and round on oh, it. I think they I think they probably have. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And and I'm certainly not smart enough to do it. But anyway, so I thought that was very interesting because it sort of like paints it as this idea that like I can like fit it into a box. It's like villains operate in the world of consequentialism but there are a total of of like three key philosophical arguments that people might make and i actually thought the other two and this is me just speaking i'm no expert on this particular topic but i thought they fit very nicely with the entire argument behind civil war okay uh, that is the marvel civil war marvel civil you know, war cat versus iron not man the american civil war <laughs> not that one no, right. no no this is yeah, very different um and the the thing about that is it, it's is very interesting specifically with cap in mind so l- let me let me describe the other ones um so uh deontology is basically the right thing is determined by the rationality and in accordance with a moral rule or principle um which i know sounds like kind of like wordy and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that yeah it's a little high mind highfalutin sounding <laughs> just a bit yeah, just a, I, I didn't write that that was like my that was like my copy pasted definition gotcha but i would apply this particular idea to tony stark in particular okay so tony's big argument in civil war is that like he has seen the he has personally seen the result of going unchecked so at the beginning of Tony's character arc, he is the owner of a weapons manufacturer. He is insanely wealthy because of it. You know, he's this like playboy philanthropist who has known the world over. And basically what's what's happening right under his nose is his weapons are being sold to people who want to use them for very dangerous reasons. Right. And this is this is like sort of what he ultimately discovers is he's like, I wasn't watching carefully enough and my products were being used in a way that we didn't intend. And because of that, like we needed to halt everything and assess how we're how we're operating as right. as a company. Um, and I think that as he moves forward, you know, in the Marvel universe and, and you start to see this character grow, is he starts to realize that the Avengers themselves kind of are just like the new Stark industry weapons. Like right. all of a sudden it's like you've got all of these super powerful people 
existing out there in the world. And if nobody's actually regulating them, then what's to stop any one of these people from going and doing the wrong thing? Uh, But that also means that what you would be doing is assigning, you know, like a group that is determining when and how and where the Avengers act. And when that group would be like able to say like, okay, let's go forward. Like this is the battle we want to take. Like the idea is that that is the correct thing to do because like the rules and the rational thinking and everything has been like applied to it and determined like this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, Jay, let me, let me just cut in real quick. Okay. I have absolutely no idea that we're recording this after the main episode. So I have no idea how well it's going to fit. Did it fit good? Did it fit poorly? Did we just interrupt ourselves mid conversation? Who's to say? Who's Maybe to, we use the little transition slide again. It's entirely possible. It is. The only one. Possible. Tr- po- wow. Well wow. said. Well said. Yeah. The only one who truly knows is Ethan, the editor, because he's the one who made the decision at the end of the day. Yes. Way, to, way to go, Ethan. I think that you mostly crushed it. I th- probably. So we're cutting in to today's broadcast in exactly the same format in which we discuss anyway. But we have exciting new news over on our Patreon page. We've been, we we were able to brainstorm and come up with a cool a couple of cool new ideas, some cool new perks. Yeah, and we, we want to tell you guys we got of, we got some new new things popping off over there. Look at you go. You yeah. were just nailing all these pop. Look, I mean, everyone knows I'm sitting next to our popcorn machine right now and let me tell you, you can walk up to the popcorn machine months later and find some some popcorn down there and just take a handful if you want and you will discover that it turns out it's still pretty good how about that now that said though you just cannot you can't rely on that forever you, you don't really want can't. you don't want you, you you could eat it but you want that fresh popcorn on top wow look you gotta you go. freshen it up yes so I'm, I'm, so we're freshening up our Patreon. Hey, with, with fresh popcorn. With fresh we're, popcorn. We're, 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 we're popping new popcorn upon the old popcorn. Exactly. So everything that's already there is staying pretty much the exact same. But imagine raining down upon you up from above, just freshly popped, light, little popcorn. Fluffy, buttery. Yes. Popcorn deliciousness. Exactly. Okay. It's just, it's surrounding you. It smells amazing. There you go. There you go. Okay. So let, let's, let's run through, let's run through the tiers because okay. we're going we're gonna to start with, with our $5 tier, which is the, which is host Buzzy B or host Jazzy J or host neither. Right. Uh, the, the idea here is that we wanted an opportunity for you guys to submit your votes on who gets to be the one true host each mm-hmm. and every single week. Uh, with that, as always, you will continue to get after the final pop, which is an additional 10, 15 minutes of Jay and I discussing anything we didn't discuss during the main sode. Right. Typically feed up, by the way. So, you can know, we're, you know, we're, we're a little more like relaxed during after the final pop, just a little like this. Right. Right. It's casual. It's casual. It's, it's casual. Like, now I'm going to put my feet down because it's serious. I know. Yeah. yeah, burn, yeah so serious. serious right, now. right yeah, now. yeah. It's not after the final pop. No. It's feet. It's just feet up the, mode. Feet, no, up feet mode. down mode. Right. I don't really know which one it would be. It they is both kind of seem like they could legs be crossed mode. Nailed it. Yeah, nailed People it. People are always like, "Do you guys ever uncross your legs?" And um, the re- I don't know. This is uh, the reason is because I hate when uh, the reason I normally keep my legs crossed because I don't like having that like front of the pants shot. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. I remember back in the day we used to have our book club that we did, and the way that we would set up our yes. webcam <laughs> was like in such a position that it was like, "Hmm, this is well, why don't I need we just constantly? Why don't we just fix this?" Yeah. But we never did. <laughs> it was just like continuously a problem. So I'm sorry if we subjected you uh, to that. Um, anyway, uh, what else do we have going on here with with the new At the $5 tier? tier, I think we are also going to have a monthly live Q&A live stream that will yes. happen on the last Friday of every month immediately following the premiere on YouTube. Yes. Right. And the idea here is that you guys... Uh, uh, Tons and tons and tons of people email me. They submit all sorts of questions. Uh, This is your opportunity to basically just hop right on in. We're going to have a live stream where we're sitting in the popcorn culture chairs and we're just here to answer your questions. Right. And it'll be uh, like an exclusive live stream just for patrons. So we'll post the link on the Patreon page and then we will be chatting just with the select uh, theater of kernels that are uh, a member of the the Patreon. Theater of Colonels. That was so good. Wow. So good. Okay. Uh, moving on to our our new tier. So this is yes. a tier that doesn't that doesn't currently exist. Right. Uh, so we, we're we're taking some names. We're rearranging. We're doing things a little bit differently. But we will also be including now a ten dollar tier. Yes. Uh, which is now buzzier B, jazzier J, and neither or neither. Exactly. Uh, at this particular tier, we are going to be doing something called burnt popcorn, uh, which is like 
It's an episode where Jordan is going to sit down with us and basically go through all of the different things that we either had questions about and never answered, right. things we just got completely and utterly wrong. Mm-hmm. So Jordan, as ever, who is very wise in all of her ways, will be will be correcting us and communicating with us on things that we either just left completely wide open, open-ended, things that did not ultimately become come full circle right uh and be like where well, you, you started a conversation about this where oh. was it going <laughs> right we, we never got there guys so jordan is basically going to come in and tie up all of our loose ends and correct us which is i'm sure what so many i can tell during when we would do the premieres so often you and i would just like start questioning something and we'll pull out a thread and the chat will absolutely know the answer 100%. and they will start correcting us immediately and we'll just of course we can't see we're, it because it's not live right <laughs> and we'll just blunder on forward and we're like I guess we'll never know, but <laughs> but now we will we'll know. know because we will have burnt popcorn. That's going to be the ten dollar tier, Jazzy or Jay or Buzzy or B, whatever. Um, those will both still, if you sign up for either one, that'll still cast you a vote for whatever whoever you think should be the one true host, Jazzy J. Um, but moving on, then we also are going to have our twenty five dollar tier. Yeah, the twenty five dollar right? tier has has been there, uh, but it has a new name. New name. So now we're gonna have buzziest B, mm-hmm. jazziest J, and neitherest neither. Exactly. Uh, and I think the the cool and exciting new thing that comes with this tier is an additional vote. An additional vote. So uh, if you're at the twenty five dollar tier, your vote will count double for the host of the show. It'll just count for two votes. Um, and then what, then you're also, um, immediately signed up for our exclusive quarterly items. The first of which was our, um, Fred the cup. Yes. Which I actually have right here. Yes. This was, this was the, this was the first round. And the whole idea here is that it's basically one of, one of the great ways to support any creator, not us in particular, even is by, by way of their, their merchandise and stuff. But one of the things that is very difficult is figuring out how much to yeah, order inventory. Yes. And so in a lot of instances, you might think a shirt or an item is going to be super popular and buy a whole bunch of them. And then ultimately people do buy them, but you end up maybe losing money in the process because you overestimated uh, drastically. Right. And so what we wanted to do for popcorn culture was, was try to avoid that as much as possible by basically knowing the exact number of anything we're going to order, meaning that your support is going as far as possible. And it allows us to get a little bit creative with what these pieces of merchandise are going to be. And I can assure you that each and every single one of them, Jay and I, are having an absolute blast planning yes. and discussing and preparing We've for you guys. We've got cool ones planned out for the rest of the year, and I'm very excited about them. The The prototype, I know we keep talking about it. I know. Um, we have seen it. It, it, it. We thought it was going to be here this week. I don't know. I, I dare say it'll be here next week, but I don't know. I know, I know. It's killing no. me. It's killing me. <gasps> uh, but I'm dying to show you guys. I think everybody's going to really love it. Love it. 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 I think it'll be worth all of the energy, all the waiting, all the hype. Yes, it'll live up to it. Uh, and then, in addition to those, uh, there there is one tier that we have also added. That if you that if you are just wanting to support the show, if you just want to have a way to support the show, we do have some some top tiers some top tiers some top tiers yes these tiers will give you 100 votes they will for whoever the host is which i will say i think at this point um even even if multiple people signed up for the jazzy j or it's not the jazzy j what's mine is called uh, stovetop popcorn yes yes if you sign up for stovetop popcorn i think even if multiple people did it which would be crazy um I don't think I still don't think I would quite get there. I think if two people did it, you'd get there. I don't think so. I, I, I think, think a gap. I don't know. I don't know what the gap is. Okay. 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 Yeah. So anyway, we, we have additional tiers out there. This is going to be um, buttered popcorn, which is mine, which is my you know preferred method of of popcorn. Jay's is stovetop popcorn, uh, and then we also have unpopped popcorn, which would just be a hundred votes for host neither. That's the anarchy. That's the anarchy vote. I know it is. Yeah, it is. It and where we have to start the episode, just fifteen seconds of silence. Well, mm. host neither or neitherist. Well, we have to put on our best. Like we're waiting at the dentist office stairs, where it's just kind of like a stone cold, like yeah. blank, maybe, absent. Maybe we'd like buy some highlights magazines to flip through. We would absolutely have to. Yeah. I would want to specifically buy old ones too, yeah. like ones where all the puzzles have already been solved and like circled in crayon. Yes, it's like ugh. It's like I can't even be entertained by this old magazine because someone else has already solved 
No, I have no idea what was actually in Highlights Magazine, except that every issue contained a Can You Spot the Difference puzzle. That was my absolute favorite. And that was, as far as I was concerned, the only reason the magazine existed was for the (laughs) Spot the Difference puzzle. Yes. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It it highlights what's different about the two photos. That's the whole thing. If If the whole magazine was just that, boy, I bet they'd be doing really well today. I don't know how they're doing. It promotes, Are they even still around? It I don't promotes know. critical thinking. It promotes critical thinking. And as a kid, I loved it. I'm like, new highlights. Let me go to that one page. That's it. There you go. Well, guys, as always, uh, there there is no expectation that you that you provide any support over on Patreon at all. It does absolutely, of course, help the show, and we appreciate all of your generosity just so very much. But absolutely and always, the show will never cost anything to consume. It will not. So you can always rest assured that it we will always continue to be here. We will. Uh, either which way. If you would like to check it out, you can do so at patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Thanks so much. Okay. So moving on from that though, you have cap Yeah. and cap is always interesting because if your team cap, I have to imagine it's because you trust cap, right? You trust Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is, that is basically exactly what would go behind the idea of virtue theory, uh, which is the idea of you do something because it is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly cap's whole argument. He's like, if there's a governing body who says, no, you can't go and save those people. He's like, I'm not going to listen to them because I the right thing to do is like, to save the people is to save the people. It's right. like, you know, even if I am breaking the law to save the people, it's like I am operating within like virtuous thinking. Like right. I, I am doing the thing which is which is the correct thing to do, which is to save people. Right. Cap is much more on the uh, the Amir camp of which if you're unfamiliar with the name of the wind, the Amir they can um, go do anything in the world and they are beyond reproach. Right. Like everyone assumes all things they do, even if they like, uh, you know, kicked a puppy or like choked a pregnant woman in the street. I think that's the example they gave. I think you're right. They're like, nope, they must be doing it for the greater good. We don't know what their reasoning is, but clear they know better than us. See, so, no, I would, I would right. argue that's the consequentialism. You think? But I think so, because I think that their argument would be that the, the Emir held in this, in this regard that it's like, if they need to go kick a puppy, then like, it must be the case that the consequences of kicking a puppy is, is positive. Okay. I think that would be my argument for it. Okay. In this particular case. Whereas I I think what cap embodies in such a great way is like such a pureness, mm-hmm. such a like so much virtue that you can trust cap will do the right things. But being able to do that is almost limited to his individual personal character. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I it's like my mind almost has to go to the idea that I think Tony is right in this particular argument. Mm-hmm. It's like, in, in the whole back and forth, I trust Cap to do the right thing, but if it's not him, then I think you have to go Tony. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. Um, but all this came up, actually, because uh, someone wrote us an email saying that your conversation about slides last week. Oh, we're going back to the slides. Full circle. Full circle. Segue. Yeah. So last week, you brought <coughs> up the idea that slides are so amazing at playgrounds and such because it gives your kids the opportunity to be brave. Right. And bravery in it like uh, increases courageousness, which mm-hmm. is a virtuous aspect. Yes. And people who are courageous are more likely to spread virtue out into the world. Uh-huh. So quite literally, slides are good for society. There you go. Slides are amazing for society. I agree. I was, um, yeah, I, I, I still stand by it. I think slides are an amazing opportunity to, to just like practice being courageous. Like, oh yeah, I can do this. It's not that like now you're prepared for the world because like, oh, I, I know I can go. I have conquered a steep hill. <laughs> right. With velocity. It's like it's the act of practicing of like confronting a fear and overcoming it and understand like the more you do that, the more comfortable you become doing it. Um, and I do think that probably helps breed courage in people, which I think is probably a trait that goes undervalued a lot of time or maybe even misunderstood in like modern day like because you hear about like courage and bravery it's very often associated with like facing danger or doing something heroic especially like in the way we like consume a lot of media that's often how bravery and courage is represented yes yeah absolutely i think more often 
not most people are not in like life threatening, dangerous kind of situations where that kind of bravery or courage is required. More often, the kind of courage you might need is to like speak up in a meeting because you disagreed with someone. Yep. Like that's that's that is also courage. Like that is a kind of thing that it takes to go and do things. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I I agree with you completely. And in in so many instances too, the the like driving force that might cause you to not do something is the general fear of the unknown. Like right. doing any particular new activity or going outside of your comfort zone very frequently are the types of things that in here out in the real world, these are the real instances I think where bravery is like stepping into the fold. Yeah. Um, you know, like these, these are the types of things like I have to say, like my, my wife, Alice is like a Gryffindor through and through though. Yeah. She's like, she's got like immense bravery. Um, because it, like, since we've been together, one of the things that she got really into was weightlifting with yeah. me. So we were, you know, we, we both own businesses. We're both busy a lot. And so we were like, what's something that we can go and do together. And one of the activities I already was doing very regularly was weightlifting. So she came in and started doing it and she was getting like, very good at it very quickly. Right. Um, and the thing about it was there was our coach was like, okay, there's a competition, you know, like this December, like, like, do, does anybody want to go? And like, I was like, no way. No like, way. <laughs> I am not going to go and attempt to lift in front of other people. Like, absolutely not. That would be like, again, fear of the unknown. I would be terrified. Right. You know, but Alice is like, yeah, I'll do it. And, she like locks into like a training regime, you know, she's mm -hmm. like eating a very specific way, like cutting out like all these other, you know, like whatever's and she's like completely driving towards it. And you know, we get there and we're in this, like we're in a gym full of people who are like weightlifters, right? You know, like these are people who, I mean, we're, we are absolutely, you know, amateur status. Um, and the other people around, it's like they've they've clearly dedicated like a huge portion of their life to it. Right. This is their Jeep Wrangler out on the road. Precisely. Yeah. Now they're like, OK, it's competition day time for everyone to come see. Right. 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 Yeah. But it's straight up the in the way that they had it, you know, you, we're in this like um, I, I would almost go so far as to describe it as like gritty. Like yeah. the gym itself was kind of. I, I do remember I was there. Yeah. 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 yeah it was it was kind of like, OK, but the way that they did the lifts is they had like you know, music playing and like a lot of the lights dimmed, but then like on the almost like center stage were like track lights that pointed in at the person doing the lift in front of everyone, mm -hmm. you know, and Allie gets out there and just like crushes it. Just does it. I'm like, ow, you've been doing this sport for nine months mm -hmm. and you are now competing in front of people like, right. Pure bravery. Well, it totally is. It's, um, it's interesting to me that you were so, like uh wary of joining such a competition because i feel like you are frequently throwing out other crazy things we should do interesting but, okay but give me more of that though because i feel like frequently the crazy things that i that i would suggest that we do typically wouldn't put me center stage somewhere maybe not center stage somewhere but it's certainly like fear of the unknown or it's like a you know let's go do some giant adventure race or start some business you know crazy business yes but this was this is where i think my general argument would be that i think that a lot of the lucrative ideas that like i might bring to the table like might present to you or you know our parents or friends alice uh it's i would say that maybe one of the signifiers of how seriously i take a lot of those ideas is like i've spent a lot of time thinking about it and researching it and trying to figure out like how it would work so that I could peel back some of that unknown. So mm -hmm. like, I feel like I know enough about it to feel confident about how I could approach it. Mm -hmm. um, but doing weightlifting every day for several months wasn't enough to know that you could do a weightlifting competition. Nope. Okay. Yep. Very different. Very <laughs> okay. different. Well, and I think that maybe there's like some portion of it where <clears throat> I would have more confidence in my entrepreneurial chops mm -hmm. than I do in my, my ability to, you know, back squat 400 pounds. Okay. Um, if that makes sense, like, like with, with weightlifting, the thing about it is you absolutely know your like limitations, right? It's like the, if I could only back squat in this, I think the correct number was like 265 pounds. Like if I were to go into that competition and they were to put 300 pounds on it, like there's, 
it's not going up. Like right. th- there's not some instance where it's like, you know, the, the power of being center fold is like going to all of a sudden give me an ability that I've just never had. But OK, but then it's it, this is also revealing a lot to me then because it sounds like the only reason you can conceive to enter the competition is to try and win it. I do think that there is probably something about that. Like yes. if there's if there's no chance of me winning, why would I even try? Right. Right. But I don't imagine Alice thought she was going to win. That is a very fair point. This is this sounds like this reminds me a lot of the cosplay thing where it's like, I don't know how how to get into how to get into cosplay. Like if I'm not if I'm not already at 100, why even why should I should I even dress up? Yeah, but this I mean, yes, you're, right. you're not wrong at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think that it is very, very, very revealing about like what is important to me about how I go about doing things. It's, mm-hmm. I think even the Jeep Wrangler example is a very good point. It's like it wasn't enough for me just to have a lifted Jeep. It had to be lifted in a way that other people who know what kind of lift I have right. can appreciate it. Yeah. And so like that's that is like maybe the threshold. But I, I think on on a different level, it also is like the motivation like i i think that it's understanding my own motivations well enough to know what does motivate me and what doesn't motivate me Mm -hmm. because one of the things that i have always said is that like you can be incredibly smart you can be top of your class but the person you can never underestimate is the person who is motivated because for sure someone who wants it and maybe wants it more than you do like i think that that is that at the core of everything is usually what is going to drive someone to be successful at something. Right. And I think that, uh, with, with a lot of the things that maybe I would bring up to you, business ideas or, or what have you, uh, it's, it's typically the case that I think that I can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's why, <laughs> that's why I would bring it up. Okay. Yes. Well, that all makes sense. That all adds up. Well, let's talk about the other side of courage then. Cause I feel like this is something I've wanted to bring up before on the pop, Okay, but, have not so far okay so anyway i think one of the other reasons i think courage is important is because i think it is uh one half uh or it's one side of um a coin the other half is uh consideration so you have courage and consideration okay maybe not even coins coins are, that sounds like you could only ever have one okay which i don't think is the case but to me this is those two things combine are the definition of what it means to be like a mature person. Okay. Like, so I think, I think a grand mistake a lot of people assume is that maturity comes with age. End of sentence. That like the older you are, the more mature you are. Oh, I I I understand that completely. Whereas like, no, you could have an 18 year old who was much more mature than a 50 year old. Sure. You you, just because you were old does not mean you're not capable of being immature. But I think a lot of people are like, it's like they, they do the math and they're like, okay, look, I am over 30 and I am older than you. That makes me more mature than you. So I can't possibly be being immature. Right. So they like rule it out as a possibility. Right. Like if you throw a fit at your waiter because your steak was delivered to your table overcooked, you might be like, I am old enough to know that this was problematic enough that like me complaining is the warranted response. Right. Like, like me being upset with you in a, in a like very vocal or out loud or just even visible way. It's like, this is justified. Right. But it's like, that might not be the case. That's not the case. Yes. And the way, so that's where the courage and the consideration come in. Okay. So you need, you need both. And what often happens is that people lean heavily in one direction or the other. Okay. On this regard. And, uh, that, ends in various ways so if you want to imagine like a like a, a two by two chart if you will okay i can so imagine you've a two got, by two so chart. you got uh courage running along the you know the the y-axis and consideration running along the x-axis so you have your bottom left square then that would be like low both okay okay right yep, that's I'm like following. low consideration low courage that is that's going to end you in a lose lose like okay. every time Basically, it's like you didn't have the courage to speak up and you didn't consider what the other people wanted out of an outcome or like, this is, I guess this is the way to like approach like problem solving more often than not or how to like make mature decisions or whatever. But if you, yeah, if you don't have the courage to put forth your ideas, if you don't have the consideration to care about what the other people want, 
you're not going to get every everyone loses. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because there is there is an idea of groupthink where it it has been established that like there is this phenomenon of like a, a group of people might be trying to be like, okay, where do we want to go for dinner? And like everybody's kind of like tossing out different ideas, but nobody wants to be the person to like put forth like the like mm-hmm. I want here. Yeah. Let's go here. And so very typically what happens is everybody feels like they're the one compromising. Right. And nobody ends up going somewhere they want to go. Right. So it's like best case scenario, if you are the person inside of that group and, and like everybody's waffling and you know where you absolutely want to go, it's like speak up because at bare minimum, you will get to go where you wanted to go. And, <laughs> and like, even if it's the slightest sliver of, of a win, it's like, otherwise it's very likely that nobody won. Right. That is, a, that is a great situation. That is a great example of probably someone who has of a, of a, someone with high courage versus low consideration. Yes. Where you've got a, a win loss situation then. Right. Which is what uh often happens to that like in that case, that person won. Everyone else probably still lost, but at least there was a win it, on it, the table. At the very least, yeah, there there was there was something that walked away with yeah. it. And speaking from a very utilitarian standpoint, the idea is that you needed dinner. So at right. the very least you needed nourishment somehow. Exactly. So, yes. Now, on the flip side of that situation, though, if you're anyone else in that group, what you've probably suffered from is too much consideration without any courage. Right. And now you've netted yourself a loss win where you have lost. But at the very least, someone got what they wanted. This is me. I uh, Yes. <laughs> this is for sure. You're like, mm. and it's not that win lose isn't useful sometimes and lose win isn't useful sometimes. Sure. There's not situations where those aren't the correct outcomes, but ideally you get to the win win, which is where you have high consideration and high courage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, going back to that, that example, I would absolutely be the person in that group who would never speak up and be like, well, I definitely want to go here. So if nobody else is going to decide, then here's where we're going. Right. I would totally be the person who would be like, I'm fine with anything. Like, right. Wherever you guys want to go. Like I will, I will find something I like no matter what. I don't right. want to be the problem. Yeah. So then though, what you're looking for that with the win win though, is the consideration half of it where I think throws a lot of people. Cause it's like most situations where you're trying to like come up with an agreement together it's not most of the time you're just so trained to think like what's best for me rather than like what's going to be best for the group okay and that's the that's it's like you have to try and treat well wait let me let me let me pause right there so you said are you speaking in, in specific terms of it is easiest to think about what's going to be best for me based on someone who has high consideration or do you think that that is how most people think i I think most people fall into either high courage or high consideration. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So this is an example of someone who, uh, who is, who is someone who is looking out for themselves is high courage. Right. Okay. I think just mo- the, the point I'm trying to make is that most people approach the situation. Most pe- people approach situations with an either or mindset. Like either it will, either we will win or we will lose. Okay. Like either our side, I will get what I want. Or they will get what they want. But there is not, there's rarely situations I think where people are like, how can we both get what we want? Sure. And that's, that's what you should be aiming for. Yes. In most situations is the win win. Like, and the way to do that is to, I think, normally try and figure out where, what, what is it that the other people actually want out of the situation? What do you actually want out of the situation? And go from there. Okay. Not think, this is this is what I want. End of sentence. And if they're not going to give me that, then that's the end of it. Yes. You need yep. to know what both people want and then be trying to work towards that before you even have like the plan for just what you want. OK, so let me ask you this, though, because I do feel like there are instances with that mm-hmm. where it's kind of like um, you, like if you were to if you were to look at it, like maybe numerically in, in some capacity, like the idea of a true win might be 100 um, true neutral is 50 losing is 25. And then you would also have this other like partial win at 75. So if, if that is potentially the case in this particular instance, and, and you're going for that win, win scenario, is there ever the case that it's kind of like, okay, we'll both get a partial win at 75, because I would argue that it'd be very difficult in any instance where, where there could be two ideas that are separate that allow for both people to walk away with 100. Well, it is difficult. Okay. There's no doubt about that. But if you, this is why it's like, it, that's still like 
just trying to get what you, it's like, how can I make it so that I get what I want and you get what you want? Which is sure. different from thinking, how can we get what we want? Right, right, right. Okay, but so like, let's say, let's say like, you really want steak for dinner and I really want sushi for dinner. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I mean, there is the conceivable location that just serves both. Right. Um, but the idea being that like, let's assume that that's not the case. Is is the win-win situation in this particular example one where it's like, okay, let's go get steak tonight, but then next week we'll do sushi. And like the idea there being like, we will we will both ultimately win at at different points. I think that counts as a win win. That counts as a win win. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because my my thinking there would almost be like, let's say you know, like I want like my sushi place that only sells sushi, and you want your steak place that only sells steak. But there's like it's like here's a place that's not that's not as good at either, but it serves both. Right. Like that's the instance where it's like, well, we could go to we could go to location C, which has both steak and sushi, but it is not as good steak or sushi as the respective other locations could right. be. To me, that's that 75 win for both people. It's like, well, I got sushi and you could be like, well, I got steak, but that's a, that's a loss for both people. That's a lose win on both sides. Interesting. You would call that. Okay. That's a, that's not a, okay. That's probably not a lose lose, but I would call that a each peer, each person ending with a, a lose win. Okay. Whereas I think your other situation where you both agree that like, okay, we'll do this now. We'll get that later. That's a win-win. Unless you have, you know, a third option where it's like, oh, actually, there's this other place that's really great. They serve steak and juice, so we can just go there. Like, oh, yeah, let's do that. But why don't we think of that? Yeah. But I think most people would approach it from, like, let's... The, the conversation would end with either... Uh, we're getting, like, if if the decision you make... If you don't have, like, a alternate plan to go, like, next week uh-huh. to go get the sushi or whatever, if it's just, like, we're getting steak tonight, that's it. Like, that's, I think, what a lot of the, the mindset that you don't want of, like... Yeah, I understand that. That's high courage, no consideration. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Interesting. Well, and I would say that from from my standpoint, just for what it's worth, is that I do think that I have more consideration than courage. There's there's no doubt about that in my mind. But I do also think that my underlying motivation for many things is to make the people around me happy. Right. Um. And I mean, probably like a, you know, that that is the people pleaser personality. Yep. And so, in some capacity, there is something in my mind, like, especially with Alice for dinners, because this comes up, you know, obviously on a nightly basis. It's like, well, what do you like? What do you want to do tonight? And for me, very frequently, it feels like a win if I am able to provide Alice with the dinner that she wants. Right. Because most of the time I am not going to be particular enough that I'm going to like, I I won't be fussed about it. Like, it doesn't even feel like a, like a loss for me to not, because, because there is no answer to what I want. See, then that's different though. It is different. Because like what you want is to make Alice happy. And what Alice wants is to make Alice happy. Right. So you're both getting what you want. You both get what you want. Right. If you constantly wanted, um, you know, pasta for dinner, (laughs) pasta, pasta for dinner, (laughs) pasta for dinner, (laughs) you want a pasta for dinner and Alice constantly instead wanted something else. And you were just like, well, Okay, I'd I'd rather give you what you want than ask for what I want. Sure. That would be you losing. Well, okay. So my my question though is in my particular example where I, it makes me happy for for this to happen, it still doesn't exactly feel like courage is in play in that. It just seems like instead of me valuing courage at all, it's pure consideration, mm-hmm. and it's almost like it's not really like uh, it's it's not like I'm having courage by speaking up and being like well i want what you want like that doesn't feel like a good example of courage right uh so much as just like courage is almost completely nixed from the board i just have like a like a like just the two squares Uh (laughs) uh-huh just consideration consideration so does that make sense it does make sense and maybe it's not a perfect um application for every single situation sure sure, sure. yeah <laughs> I, I, that, that's also very reasonable yeah <laughs> jay i need your boxes to fit all scenarios exactly all right. circle shaped scenarios yeah there you go <laughs> no i think it, i think it's honestly very interesting and i think that um this is something that is very applicable applicable to so many people's daily life it's like if you if yeah. you start to kind of like take this consideration or even if you were to like take a take a screenshot of this graphic from like a google search or something and just like kind of like keep it somewhere where you could like maybe visually like touch on it here and there once a week something Mm -hmm. it's almost like the type of thing where it's like it's like a gentle little like little reminder of like right as you're making decisions like how how are you best implementing this it it is and like i i will tell you that i'm not just like riffing this off the top of my head sure that a lot of this um 
I uh, first read about this concept of like the courage consideration equals maturity uh, in the uh, seven habits of highly effective people. Okay. But it is one of those things that upon reading it, it is like really helped me identify. Like it gave me like, like I would have so many interactions with people where I was like, why does this feel like they're being so unreasonable or like why? Like I could tell like something was, but I had no like words. I had no like grounding for it. And it was like, it was a, this like really helped me immediately identify like, this is what's happening. The people are being image. Like I was falling victim to the same trait. Like, like, Oh, it's because they're being really immature right now. Like the way this, a problem is being approached is very immature. Like, so it's from a very, like either, or I will win. I'm speaking up. I'm being loud. I'm being courageous. It was like, you are, and those are good things, but you've lacked all consideration for the other party. Yes. Yes. Sort yes, of thing. I understand that completely. And, um, do you find that, having this backboard to sort of like now understand the situation. Like, is there not some element of, of um, like knowledge equals like courage? Because before you didn't know how or why they were behaving the way that they were. It's very much a situation where I think what it's really helped me identify is like situations in my life where I can practice being more courageous. Like the, there are unfortunately not as many adult slides out there. Um, oh, sure. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. We need to install more adult slides. We need more adult slides. How do we do that? Yeah. But I can frequently recognize like this is a situation where I should be pra- like it helped me recognize that maybe I do not possess the courage that um, I wish I did. Like you talked about like, you know, Alice is like a Gryffindor and she's like very brave. Like I feel the same way about Beth. She's like very often she'll just, I'll be like, she's like, why don't you just like act, ask those people to like move or can we like go take their table or, you know, it seems like they're moving or something. I'll be like, I'm not going to talk to those people. No. She'll be like, fine, I'll just go do it. And I'll be like, that was, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen you ever do. I was like, oh, I that. <laughs> that was that was, amazing. That was amazing. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, also somewhere built inside of that entire thing is tact. Uh, Mm -hmm. because I do think that there are two different ways to deliver the exact same message and one of them will go well and one of them won't. Oh, for sure. For Uh, sure. And so, yeah, probably, probably an entire building process to, to continue to better yourself. Right. But just don't ruminate on things. Yeah. Don't, don't. If if we learned anything, it's, I I literally did this this past weekend. Uh, we talked about ruminating a couple weeks ago, which is the idea of like replaying conversations in your head and trying to figure out how you can better prepare for, uh, future instances where the same thing came up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spent the afternoon with dad. We were like putting the boat in the water. So we, you know, spent like the whole morning talking to each other. And I, I remember getting home that night and I was just like, I started like doing the exact thing. And I was like, no, stop. Don't do that. Don't like, do it. <laughs> do not start ruminating on this particular conversation because it's fine. Right. Um, <laughs> so you know, it, it all comes to, to show that I think that the more exposed that you can be to these particular things, the easier it is to then like manage them. Right. Because you can recognize what's going on. Exactly. And when and you recognize what's going on, you're not afraid of it. Exactly. So I think there you go. I would totally recommend anyone listening to Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It was a very uh, enlightening book to me that I felt like gave me a lot of like roots or like the things to recognize. There you go. There yeah. you go. Okay. Well, as we close out today's episode, I have a, a fun something about coyotes. Cause oh. I feel like we we've, we've gone heavy for a bit and I think that there's a very soft way that we can close out today's episode Do it, so that people can, people can have a, a nice cheery and heartwarming note, uh, to go off of. So this particular, uh, instance is, it's not really a fun fact about coyotes, but I thought that it was a little Colonel out there in the real world who has a uh, direct relationship with a coyote that I thought was just so cool. And oh. I was like, this is amazing. And uh, she wrote in and said that she she works at a zoo and works with the coyotes. Uh, so it's Cameron Reed uh, and said, I, I have written down here. It's not a fun fact, but a little colonel works at a zoo with a coyote named Anastasi. Uh, Cameron says that coyotes are very soft, especially their ears. They love to play and get butt scratches. <laughs> and they even sent me videos of the coyote, uh, which if you're watching the video version of it, hopefully they're being displayed on screen right now. And you can see how adorable this coyote is and why we love them so very much. Oh man. Look at that coyote. Yeah. Loves those butt scratches. We're, we're so pro coyote, pro coyotes over here. <laughs> how, how great. How great. Uh, anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the pop. There's a, 
a whole bunch of different ways that you can reach out to us. Uh, the email does come directly to me. That's popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Uh, we're also available again over at Patreon at patreon.com slash popcornculture, where we've got all sorts of fun new stuff going on. And so very soon will we have the exclusive mm. uh, piece of merch for the second quarter of this year coming out. I is I, I thought we would have it like a month ago now, and it's taking so long, but it will be worth it once it's it gonna gets be, here. It's going to be cool. So if you guys want to check that out, again, patreon.com slash popcornculture. Otherwise, until next week, pop up. Pop.